Hey guys, welcome back to another video with BS Leather and Card. I'm Victoria. Today, I'm going to show you how we make our greeting cards. First, we're going to start off with a card base. My card base here is five by seven. We're going to be using this 120 pound paper. Keep in mind, not all cardstock is created equal. This cardstock has a GSM of 325. Moving on, we're going to be using some colors from Paper Tray Ink. We're going to use Berry Sorbet and Soft Stone. All of the products I use will be linked in the description box. I'm going to be using this die set from Spellbinders. If I can find it, I will link it below, but I bought this some time ago. Here's another stamp set from Paper Tray Ink. It's their happy birthday set. This beautiful set from Honeybee Stamps. I'm going to be using that really big circle there. You're going to need a Misty, which is a stamp positioning tool. And then here are the inks I'm going to use. A couple of Gina K's, a Versafine, and a Memento. We're going to use Soft Stone and Dusty Rose from Gina K. And as far as our Copics go, just to add some detail, I will have those linked in the bottom bar. But the numbers are RV13, E04, and R. Zero 01. I'm going to be using these Nouveau Stone Drops in Gold Rush. That would be the color name. I'm going to use some adhesive, some gold embossing powder, and these pink gems. I'm also going to need a heat gun to melt my embossing powder. I just have one from Wagner. I'm going to need a tape runner as well. This is the Kokiyu dot liner. I also have a Wink of Stella brush pen in the color clear just to get a little bit of shimmer. I've added some washi, washi tape just on the end there to help me lift the lid. And I've wrapped my bar magnet with a little bit of tape just to help me pick it up. It's a really strong magnet, so it works well. We're going to be starting off taking some of that soft stone cardstock. And I'm going to trim it down just a bit. I just need enough to stamp that really big circle over there. An eight and a half by 11 is too big to fit in this particular Misty, but they make several sizes. I'll just place my cardstock in that bottom corner, add my bar magnet, and then place my stamp where I want it. The cool thing about the Misty, it's a stamp positioning tool. So once you set your stamp down, it's going to stay in the same exact spot as long as your cardstock stays in the same spot too. You're going to be able to stamp multiple times without having any kind of mess up or overlay, anything like that. Because this is such a large stamp, I'm rubbing it a lot just to make sure that there are no air bubbles trapped in the center. I want to make sure that I get a really even stamp here. I'm just going to be taking some of this Versamark ink. I changed my mind instead of the Versafine ink. Instead, I'll be using the Versamark ink. And it's just an adhesive type ink. It's just a sticky ink pad. This is going to allow us to um, use our embossing powder, help it stick long enough so we can melt it. For my most used embossing powders, I just put them in a little container. Uh, I try to buy a, a larger amount of them.
So instead of having a, a ton of little containers rolling around somewhere, I have a big container and I can stamp and quickly cover large areas that need to be embossed. And look at that, that stamp is beautiful. I know myself and if I don't immediately close that embossing powder, it's going to spill and it's gonna get everywhere. Here I've let my heat gun heat up for a little while now. Um, you really wanna make sure that you can get it melted quickly. You're not just staying over the paper. And now we have a stunning embossed stamp. Switching gears here, we're moving on to die cutting. I'm taking this from that Spellbinders die cut. And I'm just going to place it in the center so that way my design runs all the way to the edges. I'm using a bit of low tack tape just to kind of hold it there so it doesn't slide around the page while I send it through the die cutting machine. Now I need a bit of this berry sorbet cardstock. So I'm just gonna trim a little piece off. Just wide enough for my next die cut. I'm not really into wasting paper. I like to get as much use out of every piece of cardstock as I can. And we'll just run this through the die cut machine. And now we have a beautiful shape. Now I'm going to need a piece of this for part of my background color. I'm cutting it down, uh, I would say half an inch smaller on both sides than my card is. So that would be four and a half by six and a half. So we have plenty of uh, color back there on our card base. I'm just starting to play around with the different setups that I could do. I'm trying to decide if I want the circle embossed piece on the top or on the bottom, maybe in the center. For the stamp I'm going to use that says happy birthday, it's a bit too big for this little shape. So I'm going to adhere this pink piece to another piece of the gray cardstock. And then I'm simply going to fussy cut that shape out. I'm using the Tim Holtz um, mini snips here. They're perfect for fussy cutting. I'm not a big fan of cutting out these super tiny pieces, but when it needs to be done, it needs to be done. And these scissors really help get the job done. They're slim at the edge, so it makes getting into all of the little corners super easy. Sorry I'm off screen so much there. It's just I really need to be over the piece that I'm working on when I'm cutting out these, these intricate details.
If you go to vsleather-card.com, you're going to find a section under our collections that says paper and card. That's where you're going to find all of our greeting cards. So if you like what you see here, you're going to love what you see there. Head over and pick up any set of greeting cards that you need. Just to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of color, and a little bit of fun, I'm going to use these Copic markers just to color in some of the area on the super intricate stamp. I like to start off with my darkest color sometimes just because it'll give me a base point of where my coloring is. I have heard it said that if you color over embossing powder with your Copic markers, it can hurt or damage your tips of your Copic markers. I have not noticed that uh, in my own use of this, but just so you know, be careful with your Copic markers. There are so many details in this stamp. I was having trouble deciding how much I wanted to color and how much I wanted to leave just this stunning embossed gold. Copic does sell replacement nibs for their markers. So if you do need replacement nibs, feel free to pick some of those up. If you love the way this card is coming out, but don't really want to make it yourself, head to the website, bsleather-card.com. Next, I'm going to be adding just a bit of shimmer with this Wink of Stella pen. In the end, though, I'm finding I'm just not getting the amount of shimmer I want. So we're going to get a little more drastic. Moving on, I'm going to be stamping our happy birthday stamp. But I realize my piece is still too small for this very large stamp. So I'm going to employ another die cut. Just to give it an extra fun color pop, I'm switching between the soft stone and the berry sorbet. So here, I'm just going to use this square die cut. It has little holes all around it. I'm not sure where this came from, but I will try to find something similar for you. And everything I've used will be linked in the description box. Every so often, I like to flip my cutting pads just so that it helps them stay nice and flat. And if I do not put this die cut up now, I will lose it. Now, I can see in this square that all of the holes that it created around the edge did not come out when I removed the die itself. So it takes no time at all, really. I'm just going around with these tweezers. Uh, they're craft tweezers. So they're sort of like an inverted tweezer mechanism. It's just going to help me to uh, poke all of those little pieces out. It really takes no time and it makes a very big difference in your finished card. Now that we have that, I'm going to place my little uh, pink and stone piece in the center, but I don't want to have it just be a square. I'm going to have this be at an angle so it's more of a diamond shape. I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of this and then simply place it in the center. Now we have an area that is large enough and still beautiful. You'll see that when I place this piece into the misty this time, it needs to be at a diagonal because that's how I'm going to stamp it. But I can put it in the corner since it's a square and place my stamp exactly how I want it 
on the die cut, use the MISTI, and if I need to stamp again, I'll be able to. Just making sure my placement is correct. Now our stamp is set. Place our die cap back in the corner. And I'm going to be using this Memento Tuxedo Black dye ink. I like the way that this comes out and not necessarily over the first mark ink. It's just I don't want to wait for that to dry. This dye ink dries almost instantly. I have found that using the Misty, if you have something like a long sleeve on, just pull that sleeve down over your uh, wrist palm area and it's a lot easier to rub your stamp to make sure you get an even impression. Moving on to the assembly of this card. I'm just trying to get a feel for the layout of this card. If I want this circle piece toward the bottom, hanging off the side, in the center. When you're making a greeting card, it's completely up to you how you layer your items. This Berry Sorbet cardstock color is one of my favorite colors ever. I didn't even know I liked this color before this cardstock. I'm going to be taking some of this Shimmer Craft Spray by Imagine, and I'm going to give this die cut a really good coat in that. I just wasn't getting the amount of coverage and the amount of shimmer I wanted from the Wake of Stella, so we got a little more drastic. And you can see it is intense, the amount of shimmer you get. I absolutely recommend this product if you like sparkle. Because I'm just not satisfied and more is more, I'm going to be taking this Gina K ink in Dusty Rose and this blending tool, and I'm just going to go along the outside edge of this circle. This die cut piece is starting to look like a pearl, and I love it. So far, I've tried out several lighting options, and so far, every one of them makes me look just like this. I end up with a very large shadow in the area I'm trying to work. So I will continue testing out different lighting options, but until then, this is what I have. I decided I didn't just want the pink cardstock to be my base. I wanted to have another base layer. So I'm cutting this one a quarter inch down on each side of the card, making that piece 4.75 by 6.75. And because it is a gray, even though it's a soft gray, it will still pop off of the white color. So we'll just attach our base pieces together. I see a lot of card makers attach everything to their card base. I have found that I can mess up doing that. So I like to attach everything and then attach it to my card base. Now I'll grab my extra piece of paper and I'm just gonna make sure that I get that adhesive all the way to the edge of this embossed piece. The embossing can cause the cardstock to kind of lift or warp and the adhesive being everywhere is really going to help it lay flat on your card. Every so often, I like to stop and just check my hands. And, you know, it's really easy to get covered in ink when you're making cards. That makes it really easy to ruin a card. <laughs> now, instead of just gluing 
this piece or adhering this piece down on top of our embossed piece, I'm going to raise it a little bit. To do that, I'm going to be using this foam tape. It's half an inch wide and not very deep, but it's going to give us enough dimension to really make our greeting pop off of the page. While there are a lot of techniques and a lot of items used in this card, it is one of our simpler cards. I'm going to add this to our card base and then I will trim any excess that's hanging over the card. I have tried several adhesives as far as tape runners go, lining dot liners go. I have found this one to hold strong, last the longest, and really just give me what I'm looking for in a tape runner. So now that we have that attached to our card base, we can start decorating. We're just gonna trim up these edges first. I like to use these larger, more regular scissors just because it gives me a straighter line without having to readjust my scissors. Look at that. If you wanted to stop here, you definitely could. The card is beautiful. I'm going to be adding some of these gemstones though and to stop them from rolling around on my table and making it harder to pick them up, I've just placed some of them on a paper towel. The adhesive I'm gonna be using to adhere these is called a multi-medium in the matte finish. Now taking these Nouveau drops in Gold Rush, I'm just gonna place them around the same as I did the gems. You can do smaller dots, you can do larger dots, whatever you wanna do. And that does it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. We'll see you next time with another video. Bye.